I'm Brian Myers with Engineered Efficiency. The staircase tool in Revit 2014 has been enhanced with a, a couple new improvements. Currently I'm inside of a blank drawing area and what I'd like to do is draw in a staircase going from right about where my cursor is over in this direction. So to do that underneath the architecture tab I'm going to select on the staircase tool. And the first of the new features that I want to show is this feature here called Location Line. Now technically this was in Revit 2013 as well, but in that version all they had was left, center, and right, which means you could draw your staircase from the left hand side, center, or right. And you were really drawing your staircase based on uh, where the outer edge of the treads were going to be at. In this case, we can also draw it based on the exterior supports. So the strainers on the underneath side of the staircase, either on the left-hand side or the right-hand side of the stair. In this example, I'm just going to draw it from the run left. I'm going to click once and then come over in this direction. Once we get up to about nine risers created and nine risers remaining, I'm going to click once. Now I will point out that right now another option that wasn't here before is actual run width and it's three feet. That means that we're going to have three foot between here and here. Now I could change this to be six foot right now and then click somewhere out here in space and move up and we can see now that it's going to be six foot on the next half of the staircase. Or on the fly we can change this to be four feet instead, and now it's just four feet wide. Now I'm going to do a, uh, quite obviously won't work one foot wide, just so you can see the difference here on the screen. All right? Now I'm going to change this to be four feet again. We can see it expand itself out. And that expanding out after the staircase has already started to be drawn is something that you couldn't do in Revit 2013. Now I'm going to come all the way up here to the top and I'm just going to click when the staircase no longer allows itself to be drawn in that direction. We can see that in this case the landing is cleaned up well. It has the right size here as well as down here. And we'll find that in Revit 2014 that the landings that are created actually clean up and have their widths quite a bit better with the staircases than what they did in Revit 2013. So that's another enhancement. Uh, there's some uh, general improvements to how your individual landings clean up. Now I'm going to come up here to the big green check mark in order to finish off the staircase. And now we have an L-shaped stair that goes up. And if we click on the little 3D house up here at the top of the screen, we can spin the staircase around and see we now have this L-shaped stair with different widths on each part of the staircase that tie into the landing. Now there's one other feature that I wanted to show and technically most of this feature was in uh, Revit 2013 as well but I find that it works really well in Revit 2014 and most people didn't realize this was a functionality that 2013 had as well. So uh, think of this as just sort of an added bonus here. If I select on the staircase I can then come up here to edit stairs. From here I'm going to pick on this particular half of the staircase. And what I want to do is create a T-shaped staircase. Once this is highlighted, I'm going to come up here to the Mirror tool, pick on this line that goes right down the center of the staircase, and we can see it now flips itself over to the other side. I hit Escape a couple of times to get out of the command, and now I have two different choices. I can either select on the landing right here and then click on convert and then sort of modify the sketch so that it cleans up appropriately here. Or another thing that I can do is click on the little arrow, pull it down, and now we can see that the railing cleans up and then this entire landing is cleaning up here as well. What I'd like to do now though is make it so that this part right here matches this part up here. And to do that, I do have to select on the landing also, I need to come over here to Convert and click on Convert. What this means is that I can now click on Edit Sketch to draw in the exact shape I want this landing to be. I'll click on the Line tool and then draw in the shape that I want the landing to be. And I'll get rid of these extra lines that show up here. I also need to make sure that this line here comes over and they die in and tie in, I should say, uh, to an, a more appropriate spot. 
Now, just sort of eyeballing this, this looks like it's lined up with this piece right here. It really should be lined up over here. It's not really a big deal. I can always click on it and pull it over and just drag it over so that we now have this sketch. And now this is lined up with this line up above. And by clicking on the big green check mark right here, it'll now convert this landing so that it has the appropriate shape. One other thing that I'll point out is that there is a relative height dimension that shows up here. This is the height at which this landing is going to be drawn in. And you can tweak that just a little bit by modifying the dimensions within here. But usually by default, it tries to, uh, based on the properties of the staircase, give you what the appropriate height would be. So I would usually leave that unless you just wanted to tweak it by maybe a half an inch either way. And now I'm going to click on the big green check mark. And we can take a look at this staircase once again in a 3D view. So probably the two big enhancements inside of this release is the ability when it comes time to draw in your staircase to adjust exactly where the outside perimeter it is that you're drawing to, such as the left, center, or right, or to the exterior supports, as well as on the fly be able to adjust what the widths of each one of these staircases would be without having to make a lot of modifications later in your stair drawing process.